In this video, I'm gonna show you a seven step workflow on how to save a terribly lit portrait inside of Lightroom. My name is Pai, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and slrlounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. Hello, my friends. My name is Pai, welcome to Adorama TV. Welcome to my new home studio setup. Bit more minimal, bit more natural. I kind of dig it. So look, I want to get real with y'all. And I don't think there's anything more real than showing you how to fix a screw up. And sometimes it's not necessarily a full on screw up. But first, I digress. Let's talk about why this is important. Because I guarantee there are hundreds of you. And I will not call you trolls, but you know who and what you are. But there are hundreds of you that are thinking, you should have gotten it right in camera. You should have lit it. It should have been perfect. I get it. I know this is what I practice. This is what I preach. But there are reasons for learning these techniques in post. Namely, because you're going to encounter tons of situations where you simply can't get to the ideal results. Maybe you don't have your lighting gear with you. Maybe you don't have enough time. Maybe you don't have an assistant. Whatever it might be, understanding what you can do in post will help you to still get to a professional result despite not having everything that you might want or need in that situation. Okay, so let's get into how this image was shot. And if you haven't seen our 28 to 70 video where I talk about that being my favorite lens of all time, go check it out because you'll see exactly how I shot this image. It's not necessarily, I would say, a terribly lit image. There are certain things that I am doing, and I want to explain those. So really, step zero, I want you guys to get to as good of a place as you can in camera. Now, this begins by, I'm already numbering, so let's go to letters, by A. <laughs> I want you to shoot raw, so that way we have all the image detail possible. B, I want you guys to expose that raw file so you have as much information there as possible. And if you haven't already downloaded the exercise files, this is a great place to pause. Go download the exercise file in the description. You know, you know the drill. Resume the video when you're back, all that jazz. Or load up a crappy portrait of your own. I got them. I know you got them. It's, it's totally fine. You're going to be fine. Okay. So what is a properly exposed histogram? Well, notice that with this image fully reset out, I preserved all my shadows and as much of my highlights as possible. Where I like to say to error toward is make sure that your shadows are preserved. Let your camera pick up as much of the highlights as they can. If some of those highlights are a bit blown, that's okay. That's better than your shadows being clipped. So get as much information in that exposure as you possibly can. And finally, C in that step would be, so you got raw, you got as much information as you can in that exposure. And C would be, try to do what you can to work with natural lighting. So in this situation, I'm kind of positioning my subject in a spot where I do have a bit of an opening in the leaves to the right, as you might see in the video. And that light is coming through and creating at least a little bit of direction on the face. It's not ideal still, but it's decent. Okay, now, you're gonna see in just a moment why this is a pretty crappily lit photograph. Okay, so what we're gonna do first, step one in the editing process is gonna to be to set your exposure roughly. Okay, now this is where we're going as you guys saw at the beginning of this uh, tutorial. So let's go ahead and create a virtual copy by pressing control apostrophe or command apostrophe so that way we can look back and forth at the original image. So you're gonna set a rough exposure. And what I mean by that is it doesn't need to be exact. I want you to get somewhere in the range. I mean, here it looks fine at about plus two, right? And immediately we can see, I have the highlight and clipping alert turned on, which you can do by pressing J. Here you can immediately see that to get my subject to the right exposure, the background basically blows out. And this is why it's not so well lit, right? Because ideally we would have put in like a, a decent sized softbox right here to put a nice color and brightness of light onto the skin. Because the second issue that we have is we're getting tons of green. I mean, she's surrounded by leaves. And so we have all this reflective light creating this green cast on her skin. Okay, so we know the issues that we need to kind of start correcting. Let's go ahead and work through it. We don't need to get to any fine tuning settings until the very end. So that's why I want you to think rough. So rough exposure is set. Now I want you to set a rough white balance, okay? 
I'm gonna do that by pressing W and just clicking on the shirt since it looks somewhat neutral and you can still see that gigantic green cast in the image because yes, we are surrounded by green. Step three is set your base tones again, roughly, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is I might pull a bit of the highlights, a bit of the whites down. I might bring the shadows up a little and the blacks down a bit, but I'm gonna save most of the contrast adjustments for later. Okay, step four, I want you guys to create your curve. And there's a special curve that I use for images like this that have kind of blown out features in the background and this sort of balance between, you know, a darker foreground and a brighter background, okay? So what we're gonna do is go to the tone curve. You're gonna click the point curve button. Now what I'm gonna do is add a bit of contrast by raising the highlight point. I'm gonna pull the shadow point. This is also why I'm not worried too much about my base tones as of yet. In fact, if you wanna leave these zeroed out, what I like to often do is dial everything in based on my curve, then use base tones to essentially tweak, to fine tune, okay? Especially if you're saving this out as some sort of a preset. Just a hint, idea for you. Okay, now on this, it looks better than you know where we were. In fact, if we create just a virtual copy and you know add exposure so you can see this step, here we are now. It looks slightly better, still pretty poopy. So what we're gonna do is actually pull down on the highlight point. And what I wanna do here is start bringing it down where the bright highlights turn to a matte white. Now I know I've gone to the right place when I start losing detail in the shirt. See, the shirt is darker than the highlights in the background here, right? So at about 235, I start to see the shirt lose detail. And that's where I know I wanna stop because I want the bright whites to go to a bright gray, but I don't want the shirt to lose all of its detail. I'm gonna do the same thing on the shadow point. I'm actually gonna lift up and we're gonna create a subtle matte finish on the shadows, maybe around plus eight to plus 10. That way the shadows go to a sort of dark gray while the highlights go to a kind of more uh, bright gray, okay? If you want to, you can kind of pull down on this just to get to, a lot of this is gonna be subjective. It's to your own taste and, and preference. So anywhere along the way, you can kind of adjust there. Okay, we've got our curve. I believe we're at step five, mainly because we started with a step zero, but either way. Okay, next thing we wanna do is actually go to calibration. There's gonna be some magic here. So look, calibration is where I like to make major color shifts when it comes to lighting that's tinted with a hue that is undesirable, right? So when it comes to this green hue that's coming straight through the image, I'm gonna go and actually make adjustments. So we're gonna start in the greens and I'm actually gonna pull the green primaries up so we can bring up to about plus 30 while also bring the saturation down. So I'm gonna bring it to around negative 20. Next, I'm gonna to look towards the blues. See, I'm gonna unify the blues a bit by bringing those towards the teal side. So we're gonna go down to like maybe negative 17, and I might also pull the saturation down a bit. Last, look at the reds. So what I'm gonna do on the reds is actually pull it up a bit, and we're gonna bring saturation, we're actually gonna leave it probably where it's at because we want the reds to come through a little bit more. Okay, so we're trying to restore skin tone. So right here, we get to pretty decent values when it comes to calibration. You can always come back to this and adjust, but this is kind of a setting that I would use to start getting the greens out of my shots. What I might also do is add a bit of magentas into the shadows, okay? So we're gonna last step, add more magenta in the shadow. You can start to see the color take a more natural look to it. This is where we can actually go back to tint and start finding the right white balance for this. Secret tip, I mean, kind of. What I like to do here is actually find a neutral point, like let's say right here, and then at that neutral point, I'll dial in the tint until I get reddish hues, natural reddish hues onto my skin tones, like right here. I can start seeing the reds come through on the skin, and then I go back to temperature and pull it up. So just a little tip there, when you're kind of dealing with these weird white balances and these weird hues, go to a neutral temperature, find the right magenta for skin tone, and then add back temperature as needed. Now, this is where we get to step six. We're gonna go down to HSL. We're gonna do our heavy lifting, okay? This is the rest of the color work that we're gonna do. You can start in any order that you like. Before I hit saturation, I usually like to adjust color tone first because the colors are a little more prominent, right? So if I start pulling down saturation, 
then I don't see as much of the effect as I would want to have. So on the red side, what I'm looking to do is to take this more towards natural skin tones, not towards the greens that they already had in them. So I'm not going to go to the right. I'm actually going to go toward the left side where I'm shifting the hues quite a bit. We get down to the left side too far. We've gone too much. But an image like this that started with a lot of green, we can pull it down quite a bit. On the orange side, we're doing the same thing, right? We're not trying to get to the green side. We're trying to pull this more towards the red side. So we're kind of bringing those in. On the yellow side, exact same thing, okay? So on the yellow side, I'm actually gonna bring these a little bit more towards this. And you'll notice that I'm going heavier on the reds, more subtle on the oranges, more subtle on the yellows. And then as we get to greens, we reverse. So see greens, I don't want these to be on the yellow side. I actually want them to be more toward the teal side. So I'm going to bring my greens over toward this side. We can go pretty heavy on them. So maybe plus 40. With the aquas, we take those toward the green side. So what we're doing is we're pulling the reds apart and kind of getting reds and oranges and yellows to give us a little more natural skin tone. And then we're shifting the greens and the blues and the aquas towards teal so that we get everything to kind of line up. So I'm doing the same thing now on the blues. We're kind of going to negative 40 right about here. And really there's not a lot of purple in the image, but you'd be taking them toward that same direction. Same thing with magenta. There's not much, but you typically go a little more subtle. So notice it goes heavy, subtle, subtle. Then towards the right, we're taking these three towards the greens, taking them toward greens, but these are the ones that shift towards red. Now I get to saturation. This is where I'm going to start pulling down any of the tones that I feel are just a little over the top. So I like my oranges. In fact, you might even decide like I want to add a little more reds, a little more oranges, not too much, but just a little bit more in those areas to get a bit of extra warmth in there. But I am going to pull down on my greens. I'm going to pull down the acros. I'm definitely going to pull down the blues quite a bit to kind of unify color tone. And you can play around here like there's no... There's no right and wrong when you get to this stage. You know, we're kind of just making adjustments to what looks good, okay? Another little secret tip here is you know that the skin tones reside in the oranges, right, and, and yellows. So if you want to add a bit of luminance here, so you can add plus 15, plus uh, 10 on yellow, plus 5 on red, and you can start pulling down a bit on the exposure of your subject uh, or on the overall scene because you're adding a bit of extra luminance to those colors. So we're getting to a much, much better place. And right now I might go back up to temperature, make a couple tweaks if I want to, but look at where the color was and look at what we've repaired it to already. So now I'm seeing a little bit too much red and this is where it helps to go back and forth between the overly green image and the new image to make sure that you haven't gone too much to one side. I'm gonna add maybe a little bit more of this uh, kind of warming, maybe somewhere like right around here. That's mostly everything. What I'm gonna leave for step seven is split toning. So if you'd like to add a little bit of colors, I wanna show you some tricks here. So in the shadows, what I often like to do is I'll go to click for colors, grab the drop, and I'm gonna drag it straight over something that's already present in the image. So what I'm gonna do is essentially add the subtle blue toning that I can find in the shadows into the shadow areas of the image. So I'm, you know, the shadows of like the highlight and shadows. Okay, so it's gonna put this into the shadows and I'm gonna leave that there. I'm gonna to go to midtones. I'm gonna go find a good spot. So click again here, go to the eyedropper. I'm gonna find a good spot of color on skin tone right there. And I don't want it to go in that heavy. So on saturation, just dial this back to like 10, okay? Do the same thing with highlights. So highlights, I'm gonna to go to skin tones, find a nice spot of skin tone, and I might just vary it up a little bit where we kind of pull down just to adjust the hue, okay? And you can drag this back. This is another way of just adjusting the saturation back. Now look, that little adjustment to split toning ends up unifying those colors quite a bit. And if you want to tweak, again, go to your heart's content here. This is a, another way where you can kind of stylize the look of the image and really create something unique. You can also balance your blending and everything. Usually I tend to blend more towards the uh, highlight side. So I'm usually kind of on this side. Okay, this is looking so much better than where it was. The last thing that I'm going to do, actually step eight is you're going to do like any of your kind of final contrast adjustments, your blacks, your shadows, anything like that that you want to tweak. And I'm going to bring my blacks and everything up. And 
last thing that I want to do. So step nine is any local adjustments. So on this photograph, I am going to add in a radial filter. I have one saved. This is part of the visual flow preset kit. Um, but if you don't have it, not a big deal because all this is doing is just adjusting exposure down by 0.5. Okay. So we can take it down a bit further. You can leave it exactly where it's at, but I'm going to call it good about right here. And I like this look. I mean, it's so monumentally better. I want you guys to see this side by side. In fact, Viet, our amazing editors, Mike, Viet, why don't you guys show them just this full screen? Look at the green tinted. So this is exposure corrected, but with the original color going to this image, which is corrected. And again, you kind of notice like, okay, if we have too much green, if you have too much red, you just kind of start making tweaks at this point to temperature and white balance, right? So you're gonna kind of find the, the, the happy medium between all those, and I'm gonna get there probably with this setting about here. So look at that. Look at the before versus the after. That, that to me is absolutely insane. We started with something, I mean, this was the beginning point, this is the final image, and we get to a place where we still get a professional result by saving ourselves in editing. And really, when you don't have the options of adding light, when you don't have the gear, when you don't have the time, when you don't have an assistant, knowing that you can do this in post, to me, doesn't make it a terribly lit photograph. It makes it exactly as far as you could get based on the circumstance, and then you're gonna take it the rest of the way in post because you know you can. So that to me is the power in these kind of techniques, is knowing exactly what you can do with a raw file in post. I hope you all enjoyed this video. This should be well worth all of your time that you spend watching it. If you guys enjoyed, you all can help us out by sharing the video. Give it a like and a thumbs up. Comment below. Let us know what you guys want to see in future videos. In the meantime, if you guys would like to follow me, you can follow me at PyGersa on Instagram. And if you dig our education, jump into srloungeworkshops.com where we have A to Z resources on literally everything professional photography. That's it for me. Peace.